Thank you very much. Thank you all for this uh, invitation to be here today, and uh, I, I really appreciate the, uh, the time to speak to all of you today. We are going to talk a little bit about commercial to, to military derivatives, uh, proven platforms and proven performance. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history uh, and the different approaches uh, to taking a successful commercial aircraft and turning it into a military platform or weapon systems, everything from uh, transports to tankers to an intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance platforms, as well as bombers, to really uh, leverage in production commercial aircraft to accelerate delivery and get the capability into service as early as possible with the least amount of development costs. So uh, the Boeing company actually has about 50 years of uh, successful commercial derivative uh, production behind it. Um, some of those programs uh, as early as uh, World War II platforms uh, all the way into uh, today's uh, um, airborne early and warning and control systems. And then, of course, what's very near and dear to the, uh, to the heart here in India is uh, P-8I. Uh, We've delivered over 1,200 aircraft over those 50 years to 34 different customers in 21 different countries and have accumulated over 30 million flight hours on commercial derivative airplanes. You can see here in the pictures uh, everywhere from command and control platforms, uh, VIP aircraft. You can see there on the right-hand side of the chart the, the C-40 uh, cargo and crew transport aircraft, uh, AEWNC down there in the bottom left hand, that's Airborne Early Warning con and Control, known as uh, Wedgetail, uh, and then the U.S. Air Force, uh, French, and NATO AWACS down there in the, uh, in the bottom of the picture. There are uh, many um, advantages uh, to, to really these commercial platforms, uh, but I want to take a couple minutes and, and talk about a, a few of them. Number one is those, uh, those hot production lines uh, that are out there today. So being able to take advantage of that uh, next generation 737, uh, the, uh, the 600, 700, 800, and 900 series airplanes that are really uh, the second uh, aircraft production commercial aircraft in the world that was designed uh, no, design and produced nose to tail in the, in the digital en environment. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, the, in, in a few minutes. But also that worldwide support infrastructure out there. So uh, no matter where you go with your commercial military del derivative, the ability to, uh, to access uh, those, uh, that worldwide support infrastructure, including engineering services, uh, all the way to uh, parts and spares, uh, and, and also um, maintainers, maintenance folks, wrench turners, uh, to help you keep your aircraft uh, in, in the air. So that, that commercial derivative air vehicle uh, and that worldwide uh, commercial support infrastructure. And then also that supplier base and those thousands of relationships the Boeing Company has around the world uh, with large, medium, and small suppliers which allows us to pull the kind of systems uh, onto these commercial military derivative uh, platforms uh, that, that international com customers uh, want, particularly uh, from their own uh, in indigenous uh, suppliers. And then, of course, our long-term relationships with those certification agencies uh, throughout the world. Our, our ability to, uh, to leverage uh, certification agencies like the FAA from the very beginning, have them resident in our commercial production facilities so that your commercial derivative gets the certification attention it needs uh, way up early in the beginning of the program. And then also our ability to leverage that, uh, that proven reliability of those com commercial platforms. So in the commercial environment, when an aircraft is on the ground, that airline can't make money. So we design that kind of uh, quality and reliability in from the very beginning. So the 737 is a perfect example. The world's most popular uh, airliner um, that's, that's in, in, uh, in commercial service throughout the world. Most of those aircraft fly 3,000 plus hours a year. Their maintenance cycle is designed to 75,000 cycles on the airplane. And many, many operators operate those airplanes for 30 uh, to 40 years at in excess of 3,000 hours a year on those airplanes and still have a, a 
a, uh, a passenger seat ratio that turns a profit in on every one of those airplanes. And then uh, leverage in that robust systems integration environment, both in the commercial environment for those navigation systems and communication systems that, uh, that are common, um, both in the military environment, environment and the commercial environment, as well as being able to leverage those other systems integration uh, capabilities that we have throughout the defense uh, part of, uh, of the Boeing company. And then our, our robust lessons learned where we can take the lessons that we learn on our commercial airliners as well as our other uh, military platforms and our other weapon systems uh, to roll those lessons learned into each and every one of these development programs like uh, the 737 uh, next-gen commercial lessons that we learned when we initially went to build uh, design and build P-8 for the U.S. Navy. Taking the lessons we learned on, on P-8, uh, sharing them with our Airborne Early Warning and Control Program, which is 737 based as well. Leveraging those lessons learned for P-8 India, as well as taking all of those together uh, for, the, for our newest commercial derivative uh, program, the KC-46A tanker for the U.S. Air Force. But then in the bottom right hand uh, corner of that chart, you see um, our, our customer and industry partnership. Uh, very, very important uh, uh, of, of us being able to leverage and, and get the right capability on those platforms. Our ability to, to take uh, all of those development facilities and capabilities that we have uh, inside the Boeing company and partner with our customers uh, very early on to understand their requirements like we did here in India uh, with the Indian Navy on P8I, understand their requirements and understand the changes that we needed to put into the design uh, of that aircraft to ensure that when we got to production that and, and into flight test, that, that those changes would meet the needs of that customer. So being able to take those requirements, understand their design reference models, in other words, the way they actually want to fly the aircraft uh, in a mission system uh, configuration and the effects that that would have on that commercial airplane and then be able to make those changes to the airplane in sequence down a production line uh, to get to where they wanted to be at the best cost possible. So uh, every one of these commercial der derivatives, the design and development and production, uh, is different. But by leveraging those proven processes, many of which you saw in the presentation previous to mine, uh, we, we are able to standardize those processes and apply them to each customer uh, the way they need it. But we've really used over history, we've used basically two design and production approaches for our commercial derivatives. The first one being, and I'll use the example of Wedgetail for Australia and the AEWNC Airborne Early Warning and Control Program, where we took a 737 off the commercial production facility that was a basic 737-700 that was ready for delivery to a commercial customer, and we flew that airplane to a modification facility, and we disassembled parts of the airplane uh, in order to make the modifications uh, to carry that heavy radar on top as well as a 10-station uh, a um, mission system in the back of the airplane uh, to, to operate the weapons system. So we took 90-some-odd miles of wiring out of the aircraft after we had already flown it. We replaced it with 116 miles of wire uh, for the part particular mission system application. We took the 90 KVA generators that were already on the engine in service, and because of the increased power requirements, we doubled the, the size and the power of the generator for 180 KVA. We put all of those things back together, installed the mission system and the radar on the airplane, put it all back together, uh, and then went out and flight tested the airplane. So that's one design approach. The other one is uh, the example that we used on P-8 uh, and that we're also using on, on P-8I for India. And that's really our approach of doing inline modifications. And one of the reasons why the 737 uh, was, uh, was the right aircraft to go prove this concept out of was because of its uh, digital uh, design and its digital production facility, which allowed us 
to make all of those changes in the design environment, the digital design environment, and apply them to our production line. And I'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. And then couple that with our, our worldwide support infrastructure uh, so that as we uh, made changes to the aircraft, uh, we could take that design and, and ensure that uh, on that production line, as we leverage that production line uh, for spares, and, and lifelong support, uh, we could do that up front in the program to ensure that the airplane would already always be ready to, to fly. And then coupling that with an open architecture mi mission system. So really designed with the future in mind, uh, you know, modular, easy to upgrade, uh, application capable, and fully connected. Um, so it, a, a full communication suite uh, and data suite uh, built into the architecture so that you could get the information where it needed to be actually before it needed to be there. Whether that's in the handheld of the soldier on the ground, uh, critical sensor information specifically tailored uh, for that particular, sale, that particular soldier on the ground, or whether it's getting that information, that intelligence information, 6,000 miles away uh, back to an intelligence support center for evaluation and back out to the airplane in an, in an um, actionable intelligence form in order for the crew to be able to take advantage of that. So a little bit about the way we build P8. We talked a little bit about the design environment. You saw a lot of that up there in the presentation earlier, but that di digital design environment. So we could take those effects of the U.S. Navy uh, using P-8 for anti-submarine warfare with weapons uh, on the airplane, a full bomb bay in the airplane, and a full avionics suite, including uh, electronic support measures, uh, a maritime ASW-type uh, radar, uh, and uh, a full acoustic suite, the ability to deploy sauna buoys from a commercial aircraft, as well as carry weapons on the wing and, and in the bomb bay. So Proving all of that in the digital design environment and then being able to port that right into our commercial production facility and hand tailor uh, that particular aircraft for that mission for that particular customer. So all the fuselages for all 737s, including P-8, are built by Spirit Aerosystems uh, down in uh, Wichita in the U.S. So as the P-8 uh, particular fuselage uh, moves down that production facility. Uh, it's right next to a commercial 737 that may go to, uh, uh, to Aero India or Southwest Airlines. Uh, and when it gets to the point where they have to plumb that uh, fuselage uh, for the Bombay, the production system automatically takes care of that, and that f fuselage, as they lay the keel, is laid for that specific aircraft. Once the fuselage is completed, in Wichita, it goes right on a rail car uh, exactly the same way that the commercial fuselage does, uh, and they go by rail car uh, from Kansas, Wichita, Kansas, in the middle of the United States, all the way up to Renton, Washington, uh, just south of, uh, of Seattle. There, um, the, the rail cars uh, and the fuselages uh, are loaded into two different production facilities. So the commercial facility, which will produce the, the aircraft for the airline, and then right next door is the P-8 facility uh, where they produce P-8s. Identical production facilities, um, they can handle either, either type of aircraft, identical production facilities. This airplane goes on to a sled, and it is uh, one of the only... Uh, moving production lines for a commercial aircraft of its size in the world. Uh, the other one is another Boeing aircraft uh, made up in Everett. But it is a, a moving production line. Uh, the engineers and the mechanics that do the final assembly on the aircraft uh, never really have to leave the airplane. Uh, all of their tools, all of their parts, uh, everything that they need is attached to the moving production line. And as it moves down the production line, um, all, all of the installation uh, is made, uh, including over on the, uh, on the P-8 side. So the particular P-8 wiring goes into the airplane from the very beginning. Uh, all of the systems that are plumbed to receive the, uh, the mission system are all there. All the electrical hookups, all the cooling, all of those kind of things are done in sequence down that production line in Renton. 
Once the aircraft pops out of the end of that production line, uh, we, uh, we have a flight crew that, uh, that uh, pre-flights the airplane. Uh, the airplane takes off, does a couple laps around the field, and it recovers over at Boeing Field uh, in Seattle, uh, where it goes into another facility where the mission systems uh, installation and checkout is done. So all of those particular mission system things uh, are installed in the airplane. So if it's a U.S. Navy P-8, all of those partic particular mission system items, as well as a P-8I uh, or a P-8 for India, uh, they're all done in the same production facility. So the indigenous equipment that the Indian Navy needs on P-8 uh, is done in that, in that installation in the mission system. So this is really the first uh, in industry with this type of inline production, uh, and it enabled us uh, to, to bid this program to the U.S. Navy um, much faster and to field this airplane uh, much quicker. So when we initially uh, bid this uh, this weapon system to the U.S. Navy, we told them that uh, th that was in uh, 2003, actually, that we turned our bid in. We were awarded the contract in 2004, and our bid said that we would do first flight on the airplane in August of 2009. And, and because of uh, how well this integration went and this production design and production went, we actually flew in April of 2009. So we were actually ahead of schedule. The aircraft is in um, uh, flight test with the U.S. Navy and also with the Indian Navy. The first three Indian Navy aircraft uh, have been completed and, uh, and are in uh, test and, and checkout. And uh, the U.S. Navy actually has their first squadron uh, finished with their training and are preparing for the first operational deployment uh, later this year. So also what goes into this process is... Uh, uh, we found out is it's really a never-ending process. So in order to stay up with technology, uh, we have to continue to prototype the, uh, the future. So we do have a series of uh, high-fidelity integration labs to enable systems uh, to, to mature uh, quickly uh, and allow customer collaboration early to get the most effective system uh, out there with the operators as quickly as we possibly can. So um, these labs also uh, allow the team to develop and integrate uh, hardware and software prior to the start of major system test or prior to fl flight test. So everything we do is, is prototyped, in developed, integrated in the lab uh, before we ever go out and put it on the airplane, uh, even if, if production is, is ongoing at the time. And that collaboration allows us to make the changes uh, that, that might be needed uh, even after the, uh, the architecture is laid down. Make those software changes, prove them in the lab, and get them rolled out to the airplane uh, as quickly as possible. With the least amount of flow time, uh, eliminating duplication uh, and confusion uh, in the integration, and really um, lower our execution risk and, and costs. So into the future, uh, we continue uh, to, to be out there around, uh, around the world with P8. Uh, we do see this as a very robust market uh, because of the high level of capability uh, that it does produce uh, at the lowest possible risk and the lowest possible cost. Uh, and we think that uh, as India uh, receives its P8s and gets them into service, that many more international customers will follow. Uh, there is tremendous interest uh, in 737-based uh, airborne early warning and control, uh, you know, that's uh, fielded in Australia and is being delivered uh, to, to Turkey uh, and to uh, South Korea as well. Uh, VIP aircraft, uh, there's a very robust market out there for, for VIP and command and control aircraft. And then, of course, as the U.S. Air Force uh, uh, finishes up with development and flight test and fields the, uh, the KC-46A tanker, uh, we expect that the international market uh, will be very robust there as well. And then, of course, that uh, 50, uh, 40 to 50-year platform in, in AWACS uh, that is deployed around the world uh, continues to be uh, monit or, uh, modernized uh, at a very quick rate uh, and stays in service and, and is delivering great capability around the world. So this is really today's capability for tomorrow's responsibility, a great picture of P8I 
you know, a great responsibility deserves a great aircraft, and, and that's what the Indian Navy is, uh, is about ready to receive. Thank you.